presence of the king amen no better place to be is it than in the presence in the presence of the king amen i wouldn't embarrass her but she's not in here but last wednesday night i got a little card boy did i ever need it's one of those times in my life and it came from from uh from macy it's, I opened it up and she said, Pastor Gann, to Pastor Gann from Macy Wooten. I opened it up and said, you are the best pastor in the world. And uh, boy, did I need that at that time. Amen. Amen. You can believe a child too, can't you? <laughs> Amen. 
That just that just made made my week. I was, just just made just made made my week. Amen. Last Wednesday night, I think it was that I talked to you about uh, waiting on God. Right. How hard it is to wait, and what God's doing while we're waiting. And during that teaching, I told you that while you're waiting, He's working on your integrity. Does anybody remember me saying I need to teach on integrity? Well, the Lord just has dealt with my heart about that ever since. I said that last Wednesday night about talking about our integrity as Christian people, as children of God. And uh, You know, uh, the fact is, uh, integrity is one of those things that uh, takes you a lifetime to build, but just a moment to lose. Takes you forever to build it, but all it takes is one moment in your life to lose that integrity. And I can promise you it's harder to build that integrity from that point on than any point in your life. So I want to talk to you tonight about about our integrity. Second Corinthians chapter eight. I'm going to read there tonight, then we're going to go over to Proverbs chapter four and verse twenty three. This is not easy tonight because uh, I think it affects all of us. I believe all of us, if we're not careful, and a lot of times a lot of people in this place have damaged their integrity. We didn't mean to. We might not have set out that day to do it. But we let something happen in our life that damaged our integrity. And I believe we're living close to the coming of the Lord. And if we've ever needed to live more perfect, somebody help me a minute. I'm talking about just more perfect, genuine Christian lives. It's now. Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 21, I mean 2 Corinthians 8 and 21, the Bible said, Providing for honest things, not only in the sight of the Lord, but also in the sight of Amen. Then in Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 23, Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Put away from thee a forward mouth and perverse lips. Put far from thee. Let thine eyes look right on, and let thy eyelids look straight before thee. Ponder the path before thy feet, and let all thy ways be established. Turn not to the right hand, nor to the left. Remove thy foot from evil. Father in heaven, I ask you to help me tonight. As As the shepherd or the pastor of this congregation, it's never an easy task to stand up here I, I want to make sure it's the Holy Ghost and the anointing of the Lord to help me because I don't want to ever do it without you, Lord, in helping me, God, and I praise you for it. Let us leave here tonight better. Let us leave here tonight better Christians and, and to protect our integrity that we have in our life. And I will love you for it and I will praise you for it. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Like I said, when I was teaching last Wednesday night about waiting, I was talking about how that while we're waiting on God, sometimes he's working on their integrity. And so and I said, sometime I need to uh, talk about that. And the Lord just from that moment on has been dealing with my heart up in tonight. And so again, I want to talk to something tonight that takes a lifetime to build, but just a few moments to destroy. It doesn't take long. To destroy it. Has anybody ever played the game, ever heard of the game called Scruples? It was a popular board game back in the 1980s that asked the players questions regarding everyday ethical and moral dilemmas. For example, your boss gives you an expensive front row, front row tickets to a hit play. You forgot to mark the date on your calendar and you missed the performance. And the next day your boss asks, How was the play? (laughs) Do you admit that you missed it? Or do you make up another story? Or you buy an expensive dress for a special occasion. 
And I've heard of Christians doing this right here. You buy an expensive dress or a suit for a special occasion, and you wear it once, and you realize that you don't need it anymore for, except for that one time. Do you return the dress as unworn to get a refund? Don't get too quiet on me. Because I've heard of a lot of people that does that. God help us. God help us. Uh, you see, we're all confronted with situations and difficult decisions which test our integrity. But unlike that board game, the choices we make in reality have consequences which affect our daily lives, our character, our careers, our self-image, and yes, our relationship with God. We're tested on a daily basis with situations much like that game. Uh, do you scroll through your social media or personal make personal calls during work hours in order to stay connected? It's okay simply because everybody else is doing it. So I want to talk to you tonight about our integrity. What is integrity? Integrity can be a slippery word to really pin down. In fact, it reminds me of an old joke. You invite a philosopher into the room and ask what is integrity. He says integrity is what you're like when nobody's around. Next, you invite a businessman and ask him what is integrity. And he says integrity is giving your word and keeping it. Finally, you invite a lawyer or a politician into the room and ask, what is integrity? And he quickly goes to the window, pulls down the shades, and shuts the door. Then he comes over and whispers, what do you want it to be? <laughs> what do you really want it to be? In actuality, integrity is derived from the root word integer. In math, an integer is a whole number. One, my wife was really impressed when I was showing her my notes. She was really impressed that I added a little math to my message. An integer is a whole number, one, two, three, or four, as opposed to a fraction. So the idea of integrity concerns wholeness, completeness. It is also related to another word, integrated. Therefore, integrity is when all aspects of our lives are integrated and working together as a whole. A person who says one thing but does another is fragmented. Somebody help me a minute. You know what that's called? Hypocrisy. Hypocrisy. A person who does one thing today but does a contrary thing tomorrow is a fragmented person. And that's called duplicity. But a person who speaks and acts with integrity has consistency and has all aspects of life working together as a whole. I believe if you'll listen to me tonight, not only you, but myself will walk out of here a better Christian. But a person who speaks and acts with integrity has consistency. As Christ's followers, we should naturally be people of high integrity. But you know a lot of people struggle with that in their lives. Instead of being examples of faithfulness and consistency, people often wind up being examples of hypocrisy and duplicity. We've all heard of Christian leaders who have preached holiness from the pulpit only to come crashing down because of a scandal in their life. It's beyond disappointing to be sure. But integrity is something we often demand from others, but don't necessarily demand it from ourselves. We talk the talk, but we fail the walk. 
On Sunday, we say it's better to serve than to be served. Yet on Monday, we're self-promoting and demanding. (laughs) You already wished you hadn't come tonight, don't you? (laughs) On Sunday, we affirm righteousness living. But on Monday, we cut corners. Just see what we can do to get by and still be all right with God. So why do our actions so often contradict what we say and what we believe? I want us to look tonight at the life of Daniel a few minutes. In Daniel chapter 1, verses 1 through 8, and if you want to read it in your Bibles, you can with me there. I'm going to read the whole eight verses. The Bible said, In the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, came Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, unto Jerusalem, and besieged it. And the Lord gave Jehoiakim, king of Judah, into his hand with part of the vessels of the house of God, which he carried into the land of Shinar, to the house of God. And he brought the vessels into the treasure's house of his God. And the king spake into Aphnazah, the master of the eunuchs, that he should bring certain of the children of Israel and of the king's seed of the princesses, children in whom whom was no blemish, but well favored and skillful in all wisdom and cunning in knowledge and understanding science and such as had ability in them to stand in the king's palace and whom they might teach the learning and tongue of the Chaldeans. And the king appointed them a daily provision of king's meat and of the wine which he drank, so nourishing them three years that at the end thereof they might stand before the king. Now among these were the children of Judah, Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, unto whom the prince of the eunuchs gave names. For he gave unto Daniel the name of Belshazzar, and to Hananiah, Shadrach, and to Mishael, Meshach, and to Azariah, Abednego. But Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's meat, nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore he requested of the prince of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. So tonight, first let me tell you this. When life takes an unexpected turn, you still just have to trust God's plan. Daniel was one of the young men taken back to Babylon to be trained as a civil servant. He was from a family of a high social status, strikingly handsome and intelligent. In Judah, his life would have been, I believe, quite predictable. He would have probably went to a great school, then on the, uh, on, on, on the glittering success in whatever field that he chose. He would have had a great marriage and live in a nice home and raise a wonderful family and occupy a prominent place in the temple and do great things for God. But Daniel's life takes such an unexpected turn. In a minute, Daniel lost his culture, his family, his friends. He would have to speak a foreign language and live and die in a foreign land as a slave. And a tyrant. Can I ask you, have you ever found yourself in Babylon before? You see, Babylon is that place when life does not turn out the way that you planned it to turn out. Maybe it happens when your marriage ends abruptly or your big break fizzles out. Or maybe it happens when an intimate friend just wounds you deeply. Maybe it happens when you look around and it doesn't appear like God is moving on your behalf the way that you prayed for him to move. And we all find ourselves in Babylon at times cut off from the life that we planned for and prepared and even expected to happen in our life. And it's in these times that I really believe that we face the most difficult test of our integrity. We'll toss character aside, take matters into our own hands, 
and respond in an unchristlike manner at those times in our life if we're not careful. Or remain faithful and trust God's provision and protection. You see, I'm glad tonight to tell you that Daniel did not throw in the towel of integrity. He didn't get entangled in duplicity or hypocrisy. He chose to be consistent and he chose to live out loud what he believed. Daniel, the prisoner, the foreigner, the teenager determined that he was going to live with integrity and do what was right in the eyes of God. God, help me to do what's right in your eyes. Let me say that one more time. Help me to do what's right in your eyes. He refrained from eating the king's food because the meat was from animals that had been sacrificed to false gods. And he put his trust in God's plan for his life. Yes, you, so when life takes an unexpected turn and you find yourself living in Babylon and you're tempted to compromise your integrity, you need to remember that God still has a plan for your life. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. Jeremiah 29 and 11, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and to not harm you. And plans to give you hope in a future, even when it doesn't look that way. So God's plan for us is better than our own plans for us. If you read the whole book of Daniel, you'll find out that God's plan for him was so impact, was to impact and to change Babylon, the most powerful kingdom on the face of the earth at that time. So Daniel trusted in the plan of God for his life. And he knew that God shows himself strong through people of integrity. Not only that, but let me share something else the Lord put into my heart. You've got to understand there can be a purpose for pain. I heard some, I believe Brother Hale kind of preached on this one time. It was amazing to me that I found this out, that researchers say that one of the greatest factors that causes people to give up is not when their suffering gets more intense. It's when they believe that their suffering has no meaning or purpose. So when people suffer what they perceive to be meaningless pain, they reach a point when they say things like, there's no point in going on. There's no reason for me to keep honoring God or to hold fast to my integrity. On the other hand, if they know that there is a purpose behind their pain, they will endure whatever comes their way with the mindset that the great apostle Paul speaks of when he says in 2 Timothy 2 and 3, endure hardship. Endure hardship with us like a good soldier of Christ Jesus. In Daniel's situation, when I got to look at that, I thought, Lord, help me to be like Daniel. Amen. I think they wrote a song like about that one time, one time, didn't they? In Daniel's situation, the pain he suffered didn't get any easier with the years. He was a captive teenager. He faced death if he, he couldn't tell the king what the dream was and its interpretation and finally, his life and faith was tested in the den of hungry lions. Right. But with every situation that Daniel faced, he chose to live out what he believed, yes, no matter what he had to go through That's right. That's right. in life. God was reaching out through Daniel's pain and integrity to the most unlikely an undeserving person on the face of the earth at that time. And that was King Nebuchadnezzar. Right, <laughs> Every time Daniel acted with integrity despite his pain, God touched the heart of the king. Yes. Yes. Wow, that's good stuff. He did touch him. That's right. 
Every time that Daniel acted with integrity, it touched the king's heart. It made an impact on him. After Daniel refused to eat the king's food, and Daniel 1 and 20 says this, and every matter of wisdom and understanding about which the king questioned him, he found them ten times better than all the magicians and enchanters in his whole kingdom. And after Daniel identified and interpreted the king's dreams, listen to what Daniel 2 and 47 said. The king said to Daniel, Surely your God is the God of gods and the Lord of kings and a revealer of mysteries, for you were able to reveal this mystery. And finally, look what the king said right before he died in Daniel chapter 4 and verse 37. Now I, Nebuchadnezzar, praise and extol and honor the king of heaven, all whose works are truth and his ways judgment and those that walk in pride he is able to abase. Isn't it amazing that God loved the most unlikable and undeserving person on the face of the earth? King Nebuchadnezzar. He used, I believe, Daniel's integrity, lived out against the backdrop of personal pain to capture the king's heart. Amen. My goodness. How many know tonight that evil circumstances are not sent from God? But God can use your situation to speak to the heart of someone who needs to know Christ before they head to eternity in a devil's hell. Amen. Right. I believe that's why it's so important to speak kind words to everybody you speak to. That's true. No matter how evil or what they've done to you, Amen. we should speak nothing but kind words to everybody we meet. Somebody help me a minute. You see, if the words we speak and the actions doesn't show a Christ-like integrity, we really need to search our hearts. Amen. In James chapter 3, it's kind of lengthy again, but verse 1. My brethren, be not many masters, knowing that we shall receive the greater condemnation. For in many things we offend all. If any man offend not in word, the same as a perfect man, and not able, and able also to bridle the whole body. Behold, we put bits in the horse's mouths, that they may obey us, and we turn about their whole body. Behold, the ships with through, which through they be so great, and are driven of fierce winds, yet are they turned about with a very small helm. Whithersoever the governor listeth, even so the tongue is a little member, and boasteth great things. Behold, how great a matter a little fire kindleth, and the tongue is a fire. A world of iniquity. So the tongue among our members, that it defileth the whole body. And setteth on fire the course of nature, and it is set on fire of hell. For every kind beast and the birds and serpents and things in the sea is tamed and has been tamed by mankind. But the tongue no man can no man tame. It's an unruly evil full of deadly poison. Therewith we bless we God, even the Father, and therewith we curse men which are made after the similitude of God, out of the same mouth proceedeth blessings and cursings. My brethren, these things ought not so to be. Doth a fountain send forth the same place sweet and bitter water? Can a fig tree, the fig tree, my brethren, bear olives, either a vine or figs? So can no fountain both yield salt water and fresh. You see, a person of integrity does not gossip or slander. In Psalms 15 and 3, the Bible said, Lord, 
who shall abide in thy tabernacle, who shall dwell in the holy hill. Amen. He that walketh uprightly and worketh righteousness and speaketh truth in his heart, he that backbiteth not with his tongue, nor doth evil to his neighbor, nor taketh up reproach against his neighbor. Amen. You see, gossip to slander with your tongue, to drive a wedge between others. James compares gossip to raging fire. Amen. An uncontrolled tongue causes great amount of damage. You ever notice that? What people's tongue can do just to divide and separate and cause? An uncontrolled tongue causes great amount of damage. Gossiping, putting down others, bragging, manipulating, false teaching, exaggerating, yes. complaining, flattering, and lying all cause damage and place people at odds with each other. Sure do. That's right. And people lose their integrity. Sure do. And wonder why nobody likes them. Either say amen or oh me. That's right. Amen. That's right. <laughs> Wonder why people have problem with them. Either say amen or oh me. That's right. It all starts with the most unruly member of our body that we can lose our integrity in a heartbeat. A few words spoken in anger can destroy a, a relationship that took forever to build. Amen. Amen. Words are powerful and how we use them yeah, reflects our relationship with God. How we speak is a powerful way to honor or dishonor the Lord. Right. How many believe tonight that we should always... As Christian people speak in a way that builds each other up and never puts anybody down. Was it Thumper that said this? If you can't say something nice, don't say nothing at all. I'm telling you, couples, if we would practice that, if we practice that as a church, we all want to say things. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? I've heard some people say, I say it, I don't care who it hurts. You need to get saved. You need to get right with God. So I'm just being a little honest tonight. If, it, if, you, if, if your integrity is not at a place where it doesn't bother you where you hurt people or not with your tongue, you need to pray. You need to pray. Because we should speak in ways that builds one another up. Not ever makes a person. You know, and I've, I've done it, you've done it. I wish, I wish I could say I've always been perfect at this. But if we, if we were worried about our integrity, we would do our best that when people left our presence, they felt better. And never worse. That's right. Amen. That's right. That's right. Amen. Yeah. If we if we worked on it like we need to work on it, Brother Allen, Amen. when people left their presence, they would say, "Oh, I, I I just I just enjoy being around them so much. Come on. They build me up. They make yeah. me feel good. That's right. But if they walk away from you and they feel like I'm just going to go home and cover my head up. Amen. I'm just going to go home and now, I've done that a few times as a pastor. People just speak to you any way they want to speak to you or whatever. And you want to, Brother Richard, you want to go home and put the covers over your head. Because the fact is, and I've messed it up and you've messed it up. People should be able to walk away from us and feel better. Because they were in our presence, not worse. Because they were in our presence. Integrity. Then you've got to believe that God's able. Amen. I said all that to say this. Let me back up just a little bit. Daniel could have messed up. 
Nebuchadnezzar could have ended up being the hateful old man that hated everybody. But Daniel, because he purposed in his heart to keep his integrity, he had an influence on that man. He had an influence on that man. And some, you know, your family needs saved. Have a positive influence on them. No matter what they've done to you or how bad they are, say things to build them up, not put them down. Because it may be, it may be you that God is, either God's using you to get them saved or the devil's using you to, for them to never be saved. Amen. So think about that. Then we've got to believe God's able. In life, you and I are going to face impossible situations. Situations that seem like there's no way out and there's no apparent solution. At these times, we're tempted to do whatever it takes to solve the situation. Even if it means doing what we know is not right in the eyes of God. When pressed to the extreme, we concern, the concern is not how, to, how do I honor God, it might be how do I get out of this. Many times Daniel was faced with situations that would result in his death if God did not intervene on his behalf. But Daniel remained steadfast in his integrity because he believed that our God is able to rescue those who put their trust in Him. Amen. Daniel's life demonstrates that God is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we ask or think. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And that what is impossible with man is possible with God. He didn't need to take matters into his own hands or compromise his character. But rather, Daniel boldly and unashamedly lived out his faith for everybody to see. People are watching us. Oh, as I studied for this, I saw weakness in my own. I saw areas in my life that I can improve. Because the fact is, church, it could be that you're the only Bible that some people's going to see. You might be the only Bible that somebody's going to read. And if they ever get influenced, if they ever get influenced in the right way, you see, if we follow his example and live our lives with integrity, we too will allow God to show himself strong to those around us. We're living in such a hurting world. Yes. Yes. We're living in such a hurting world. Amen. Right. Most of us in here tonight have family members that are so pitiful, yes. Amen. Yes. bound, yes. sinners, and if they cannot see Jesus in us, uh-huh. how in this world do we expect them to know the same Lord that we know? That's it. That's it. That's right. How in this world, Brother Richard, do we expect if they can't see our integrity and the way we talk and the way we build up people and not put people down. Right. And the way we bring people together and not put people apart. Amen. I read this and it kind of interested me. Scientists now say that a series of slits, not a gash, sank the Titanic. The opulent 900 foot cruise ship sank in, sank in 1912 on its first voyage from England to New York. What they should have never said is God could never even sink this ship. 1,500 people died, the worst maritime disaster of the time. The most widely held theory was that the ship hit an iceberg 
which opened a huge gash in the side of the linear. But an international team of divers and scientists recently used sound waves to probe the wreckage buried in the mud under two and a half miles of water. Their discovery, the damage was, damage was surprisingly small. Instead of a huge gash, they found six relatively narrow slits across six watertight holds that sunk, sunk the ship. Can I tell you tonight that small damage, invisible to most, can sink not only a great ship, but great reputations. Pastor Gann, you believe my integrity means that much? Yes, I do. Do you mean if I've got small cracks in my integrity that I need to work on it? Yes, I do. You mean, Pastor Gann, if I can search my life and find even the minute details that might make me where people can't see Jesus in me, that I need to work on that and get it fixed? Yes, you do. And I do too. Because if we really believe the Lord's coming, if we really believe the rapture's going to be taking place soon, you know, uh, I see all these. Some of you may not like what I'm fixing to say, and, but it's just, I'm just telling you how I feel. If I had to, if I had to make it to heaven on some people's holiness, I'd never make it. Because I see all the time on Facebook posts coming down harsh on people. Come on, help me a minute. So hard on them. Making it so hard that most people feel like, well, I might as well not even try to be a Christian. I might as well not even try. Let me tell you what to get people saved and right with God more than your judgmental spirits and all of those things that go along with that is they truly see the love of Christ in your life. Amen and amen. Amen and amen. I can point my finger at you and say, it's wrong to wear shorts. Come on. Come on. Is that going to make you want to get saved? No. No. Help me a minute. Don't do it. That's right. And just those things, no. You live your life out before them. That's it. You live your life out before them. That's right. And let them see Christ in you. The hope of glory. Amen. Let me say that one time more time. Let them see Christ in you. Right. The hope of glory. So uh, I'm going to make a challenge to you. Over the next month, work on your integrity more than you've ever worked on it. That's right. yes. Search it out. Mm -hmm. I dare you to ask God... Lord, where do I need to work on my integrity? <laughs> I dare you to ask him, Lord, do I need to work on my mouth? Do I need to work on my words? Do I need to work on my actions? Do I need to, do I need to work on building people up instead of putting people down? Where do I need to work? And I can promise you without a doubt that God will reveal to you where that you need to work on your integrity. And at the end of the month, I promise you this one thing. That you'll have more joy than you've had in a long time. Yes. That you'll feel more peace at, with God than you have in a long time. Amen. Because our integrity, if you, don't, if you don't remember anything I say tonight, remember this. You've got to get this in your head. Yes. It takes a lifetime to build. It does. Yes. But only a few moments 
to lose. And I don't want to lose mine. I don't want to lose mine. Oh, I'm not perfect. None of us are. None of us are. We've all, I wish we could, I wish we all could just admit that. That we've got room for improvement. <laughs> I wish everybody in this place to just commit, admit that. I've got room for improvement. I've got areas in my life that I can work on to make me a better Christian to the world in front of me. God help me. Let me just, let me just throw you out in the parking lot right now. God help me. God help me. God help me. Help me to work on my integrity. How I present myself to people. How my friends and my family perceive me. And when they look at me in my casket. I don't want my children. I don't want my family. I want them to say, well, he left me good inheritance. I'm working on that. But I want people to be able to look in my casket and say he was kind. Yes. He loved the Lord. That's right. That's right. He wasn't perfect, but he done his best just to be kind to people and love people. He was faithful. And when I do that, Sister Burris, I think that's the best thing I could leave Amen. this earth in. So I, I challenge you the next month, work on your integrity. And just see what a difference that it makes. Ask for forgiveness when you need to. When you speak a word out of order and you know it wasn't what you should have said. Right. Don't ever be one of these people that just says, I just speak what I want to speak. Because if everybody in this world just spoke what they wanted to speak, there wouldn't be any peace anywhere. There, no. there just wouldn't be any peace anywhere. Right. If everybody just spoke what they wanted to speak. Amen. Can I tell you how to, the only way to tame your tongue is through the Holy Spirit. It's the Lord helping you. It's the Lord bringing that conviction when we say something or we do something that we shouldn't have done. So Lord help me tonight. Don't help anybody else in this place unless they want it and they need it. But I need you to help me because I want to be a good pastor. Lord, I want to be able to lead people. Lord, I can't lead people if I'm mean. I can't lead people if I'm hateful. I can't lead people if I say words that I shouldn't say or speak words how I shouldn't say them. Lord, help me to be a pastor that loves people and, and able to lead them with integrity. Because, Lord, if I don't have integrity, I don't have much of nothing. And Father, I ask you to help me tonight. Lord, forgive me in areas of my life where I've let it slip. Lord, forgive me of areas in my life when I've said things that I should not have said. Or I said in a way that I shouldn't have said it. Lord, help me to speak to my wife right. Lord, forgive me of times that I might have said harsh things to her when I shouldn't have. Help me, God, to never, ever do that, God. And I love you and I praise you because you're so good. Forgive me of times, Lord, that I've slipped. And help me, God, to work on my integrity. And I will love you for it and I will praise you for it. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Hope you still love me. That was a tough one. But you know, we all needed to hear that. Every one of us needed to hear that. Everybody in this place. Because there's a world out there to reach. Family members that need to be saved. A church that has to stay in unity. You know, it only takes one tongue to just to divide a church. I didn't mean to say that, but that's true. 
It just takes one tongue to divide a church. Don't take two because it's like a fire. Fire and hell. So God help us. God help us with our integrity. Would you stand with me tonight? Amen. Thank you, Lord. Come up with me tonight, would you? Come on up with me, if you would. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. That little letter right there, that little letter right there, you just don't know how that built me up. <laughs> you just don't know how that built me up. I wonder if every once in a while we did that for each other. Just wrote kind yeah, things. Kind of thing. yeah. Not just to the pastor, but to each other. Just And build one another up. We should be doing that all the time. Amen. Every day of our life, we should be working on building one another up. Amen. If somebody starts to talk to you about somebody in the church, say, speak to the hand. Speak to the hand. That's my brother. That's my sister. That's, that's, I love that person. They may not be perfect, but speak to the hand. And you know what? Here's something else. If somebody's tearing your integrity down, run from them like a junkyard dog. Get away from them. Separate yourself from them. Because I'm telling you, a person don't care about their integrity. Brother Richard, they can just drain you dry. Don't care how they talk, what they say, how they say it. They can drain you dry. And uh, so uh, I challenge you for the next month, work on your integrity. Would you lift your hands and say, Lord, right now, begin that right now. Work on, Start working on me right now, Lord. Start working on me right now. Right now, I'm the one that needs it, God. I'm, I'm the one. I, I'm the one, God. Help me, God, to work on my integrity. That people can see Christ in me. That people can see the Lord in my life. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Be a light shining out through the night. I help struggling ones to the fold. Spreading cheer. It's easy for us to think about integrity as putting your buggy up. <laughs> that is integrity, isn't it, Brother Richard? I came out yesterday someplace and couldn't even get in my car. Somebody pushed their buggy up over the little island curve and I couldn't even get to my... Integrity is you take that buggy and you put that buggy back where it belongs. Integrity is when you go to the store and you pick up something and you decide that you don't want that item no more, that you don't put it down just wherever you want to put it, you take it back where you found it. That's integrity. I believe, some, I believe somebody, it might have been Linda said one time that I, uh, the Lord spoke to her about a grape, I think it was, that, I, that uh, I said integrity is that you don't try the grape, one grape before you buy it. Be because if you eat that one grape and everybody else eats a grape in the whole store, that store's done lost a lot of money. So you don't eat the one grape. But integrity goes a lot further than that, doesn't it? Goes a lot further than a grape or a buggy. It goes to how people see us in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. 
Does anybody need special prayer tonight? We need to